Welcome to LiveScore, your all-in-one solution to live sports scoring for broadcast and web. This tutorial will show you how to set up LiveScore for your event and the basic use of the program. Let's begin. When you first open LiveScore, you'll be prompted to select a sport setup. If you see the sport that you are scoring, select that. If not, select multi-sport. For this video, we will be using basketball as an example, but please note that many features are similar across all sports. When the sport interface first opens, it may appear a bit intimidating. The scoreboard is shown in the center of the screen. The scoreboard displays in real time once the program is running and is identical to the extended display. At the top of the screen is the toolbar, which displays the file, edit, view, input, output, tools, and help menus in addition to CPU usage and the start button. Located at the top left corner, you'll see the server settings, which are used to connect mobile iOS devices like an iPhone or iPad. We will go over how to do this in a later tutorial. Below the server settings are the game settings. Within the game settings, you'll enter in all the details of the game. For example, team names, logos, and period lengths. The center bottom features the console output, this output will display anything the program needs to tell the user. Along the right column, you'll find the scoreboard settings, which control the visual settings of the scoreboard. For example, you can adjust team colors, display elements, and more. Now let's begin the setup for a basketball game. We will start with the game settings and naming the teams. To do this, go to the Away Teams row, double-click the team name text box so that the text is highlighted, then type the desired team name. Repeat this for the home team as well. Some scoreboards allow for a team logo to be displayed. To do this, go to the image browser for the desired team by clicking the box with three dots. This will open the system file browser. Navigate to an image file, select it, and click open. Repeat this for both teams. To view the changes you made, you must click submit. If at any time you would like to reset the scoreboard, click reset game. Now that the game settings have been locked, we can move on to the scoreboard settings. This first section allows you to pick a scoreboard layout. Some have more features than others. The next box shows all available features and allows them to be added or removed. Simply check the box next to the feature you desire. Beneath that box is the background color box. This feature is needed to key out the background on the scoreboard. Note it is not possible for LiveScore to send an alpha channel, so a switching software with keen capability is required. More on alpha channel options in a later tutorial. To edit colors within the scoreboard settings, click on the drop down and click More Colors. You can now choose any color you like and get the exact RGB level. When picking a background color, be sure to pick a color that does not appear anywhere on the actual scoreboard. Below the background color, you can edit the team colors. To edit the team colors, click Edit. This will open the Color Manager. If you want to see a live preview of the changes, click the Live Preview box. The colors you can change are the team colors, the primary color, the secondary color, and the text color. To edit a color scheme, click the drop down next to the color you want to edit. This gives you the option to edit the color, in addition to setting a horizontal, linear, or radial gradient. To edit the gradient, you select the different colors along the gradient and choose that color. You can use this method for all of the colors in the Color Manager. If you dislike a change that you made, you can reset back to the standard by clicking Reset Colors. If you have a color scheme you especially like and may need later, you can click Save Profile, which will bring you to a System Save menu. Title the profile, select the destination, and then click Save. If you want to load a profile, Click Load Profile and find the desired profile, then press Open. To save your changes, be sure to click Save at the bottom of the Color Manager. Hitting Cancel will delete all changes. Below the color settings is the main image. The main image allows for a logo to be displayed, a broadcast logo, a sponsor, or anything else. This feature works the same way you would add a team logo. Click the box with three dots and use the System Manager to select the image that you want to upload then press open. To see all these changes made under the scoreboard tab, you must click submit. Below the submit button is the display settings. This allows the scoreboard to be scaled. Use the plus or minus icon to scale the scoreboard to the size that works best for you. If you wish to set the zoom back to 100%, simply click reset zoom. 
If you wish to use animations or prevent the scoreboard from being moved once the program is started, check these two boxes. Now that your scoreboard is set up, you are ready to start the broadcast. Press start at the top of the screen. In the next tutorial, we will cover the basics of using the program during a game. Thank you for choosing LiveScore.